Hello, I'm Juliette Dragas. Welcome to the 13 Vault, where we dig through our archives, find stories from the past, and give you a look at this station's history. What we've dug up today is a special celebrating our 35th anniversary from 1997. We take you through the history of our news station, travel around West Michigan, and highlight some familiar faces in the process. Enjoy. This is a WZZM 13 special presentation. 35 years working for you with Lee Vanamede and Juliet Dragas. Hello and welcome. I'm Juliet Dragas. And I'm Lee Vanamede. On November 1st, WZZM 13 will celebrate its 35th anniversary. A lot has happened over the years and people have come and gone. Today we're taking a look back at this station's history where and how it got its start. Plus, we've brought you a number of big stories over these last 35 years, and you'll see some of the more memorable ones. And does the name Ann Doyle ring a bell? How about Barry Shanley? They're just a few of the past WZZM personalities who will join us to share their fond memories. And finally, at the end of this program, we have a surprise finish. So you want to be sure to stick around for that. But for now, we invite you to sit back and relax as we take you on a sentimental journey beginning in 1962. When TV 13 signed on, an uphill battle began. It was a new station on a new network, ABC. TV 13's original call letters were WIIM. But a television station in Lansing, WJIM, complained that it would cause confusion. So a change was made, and WZZM was born. When the station signed on, it was located in downtown Grand Rapids, inside the Pantlin Hotel, in what is now a restaurant, the 1913 room. The main door to Channel 13 was right there. We asked Dave Kolk, an engineer at TV 13 from the beginning, to take us on a tour. Well, here we are inside the 1913 room, what was then WZZM. I'm assuming, mm -hmm. David, that it wasn't quite as elegant when it was uh, Channel 13. Not, not quite. Okay, not quite. So In fact, it was actually considered the hotel basement and not designed for a TV station. As an engineer, Dave helped maintain the equipment that kept the station on the air. He remembers the first broadcast well. We'd only been on the air about 15 minutes and we had a major breakdown in our transmitter and went off the air. When it was repaired and back on, there was only like 10 minutes or so, 10 or 15 minutes left before it was time to go to the first program from ABC. We were an ABC affiliate right from the start. And uh, from then on, things went along fairly well, but that first day was hectic. So people here that are enjoying their uh, prime rib and filet mignon, uh, actually I understand are sitting in a spot mm -hmm. where there was once live wrestling. That's right. Live wrestling, they would set the ring up in the studio and tape a whole show. That went on for quite a while. And of course the news. Uh, yeah, there was... The news was done in the days before teleprompters and yes. so on film. And yes. And yeah. this is where Bozo got his start as well. Howdy, boys and girls! The people that come up to you and say, I was on your show 20 or 25 or 30 years ago, and uh, they were little youngsters now, and then now i got to look up to them and say, oh, you are? Well, nice to meet you, sir. You know, you're a butchy boy. You're a tall butchy boy now, you know. All that where you can still be in, in your into 31 years of making people happy and laugh and putting that smile on the face, it's been a heck of a great ride. <laughs> Within 10 years, the station outgrew the downtown studio and moved to Three Mile Road. But more than the station's location has changed over the years, technology has too, especially in the weather department. Presenting the forecast was a lot different back then. Temperatures will be in the 70s here in Michigan, low 80s all the way up through the Plain States up into Canada. You just drew on a plexiglass map, and then when you were done, you just got out some uh, water, scrubbed the thing off. Simple as that. But WZZM has always been a market leader when it came to forecasting equipment, something Bill is quite proud of. We were the first station in West Michigan to have meteorologists. We were the first station to have radar. We were the first station to have Doppler radar. We were the first station to have Nexrad radar. We were the first station to have satellite pictures. We were the first station uh, to have, I mean, anything when it comes to weather. And now, WZZM 13 News is preparing for the 21st century. 
and making more changes to serve the viewers better. And although he's now retired and only working part-time, Dave Kolk is a part of it all once again. Well, when we first started here in the Pantland, uh, uh, we were nothing. We were uh, uh, just a nothing, you know. But uh, we were excited about it, and everybody uh, did their part, and little by little, it, it gained ground, and uh, that's a nice feeling. That's a nice feeling. And then now today, again, this is major what's going on right, right now, right today. Right. Built on uh, many hard, many years of hard work by you and, and a lot well, of other people. A lot of other people. <laughs> Sentimental. Dave Kolk, one of the best of the alumni oh, here at yeah. WZZM. Now, Juliet, you know another interesting note about the early days. At the Pantland Hotel, there used to be an elevator that opened up right into the studio. So wow. every once in a while, when the anchors were <laughs> on the air delivering the news, someone would just come on out and walk through. That is the scream. And it's so much fun seeing the old video and it pictures is. and the people who have been here for so long. A long time. Well, from the beginning, WZZM has been dedicated to bringing you the best news coverage possible. Well, do you remember the riots of 1967? How about our investigative report, The King of Nuego? Today, we're just two of the big stories 13 News covered over the years. Up next, a look back at some of the others. And later, some former on-air personalities join us for a look back. Hi, I'm Martha Teichner. I worked at WZZM 1972-1973, I think it was. I was known for being messy then, and I'm still messy now. Nothing has changed. For the last 20 years, I've been a correspondent at CBS News, first in Atlanta, then in London, then in Dallas, then in Johannesburg, then back to London, and now in New York City, working for Sunday morning with Charles Osgood but I've always had a real soft spot for WZZM and especially the people I knew there. I wish you a wonderful anniversary and many, many more. Hi, I'm Guy Gordon and I do the 6 and 11 o'clock news for Channel 7 down here in Detroit. I grew up watching TV 13 and on the first day that I reported for work at WZZM, the day was the day that President Gerald Ford dedicated his museum and brought the world's leaders to Grand Rapids. It was the thrill of a lifetime for a hometown boy. Happy anniversary, WCCM. Welcome back. You know, from day one, WZZM made a commitment to cover the news that affects you and your community. There have been a lot of big stories. We begin now in 1962. The 1960s were a time of change, tragedy, and the first unconfirmed reports say the president was hit in the head, and renewal. One of the big stories of the decade, the completion of Grand Rapids' first freeway. In 1961, US 131 opened to traffic, linking Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo with an expressway. I-96 and I-196 were built a short time later. In 1961, construction began on a new Kent County airport. It was moved to Cascade Township. It took more than two years to complete, and a huge grand opening gala was planned for late November, but it was delayed by a tragic event. President Kennedy has been assassinated. It's official now. The president is dead. In 1963, just one year after WZZM signed on the air, President Kennedy was assassinated. And like all Americans, the people of West Michigan were mourning the loss of a leader and the end of a dream. By the mid-1960s, the conflict in Vietnam was escalating, and West Michigan men and women suddenly found themselves leaving for a foreign land and fighting a war that would not be won. In summer 1967, racial tensions exploded. Violent riots in Detroit sparked two days of trouble on the streets of Grand Rapids. When it was all over, police arrested 348 people, both black and white. 
by the late 60s, urban renewal was underway in Grand Rapids. Despite protests, the old city hall was demolished in 1969 to make way for new development. Part of the new development, the arrival of La Grande Vitesse, better known as the Calder. By 1970, Grand Rapids was growing by leaps and bounds. A new survey proved that. It found 28th Street was the second busiest highway in the state. A special report by the TV 13 Eyewitness News team. Jerry Ford, loved and respected by his congressional colleagues, chosen by his president to become the second most valuable property in American government. In 1973, after Spiro Agnew resigned, Grand Rapids' own Gerald Ford was selected vice president of the United States. Ten months later, the Watergate scandal pushed Richard Nixon out and Gerald Ford in. I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. In 1976, after a long campaign, Gerald Ford lost his re-election bid to Democrat Jimmy Carter. Two years later, Grand Rapids broke ground on his presidential museum. Change was the key word of the early 1980s. Downtown Grand Rapids was undergoing a major facelift. The Monroe Mall was now open to pedestrians only. And work was well underway on the city's first skyscraper, a 29-story glass building, the Amway Grand Plaza Hotel. Across the river in September 1981, the Ford Presidential Museum was complete. And dignitaries from around the world came to Grand Rapids to celebrate its grand opening. Another big story in the 1980s, a WZZM 13 News investigative report, The King of Nuego. The story looked into realtor Kel Dietz's relationships with certain Nuego County officials. Things became so heated, our camera crew was assaulted by Kel's brother as they tried to interview Dietz. Who are you And in the video, you can see him coming up to me. Uh, and uh, yelling, um, I will not, why are you intimidating me? Why are you intimidating me? And he knocked me to the ground and started to, to hit on me. No. Why are you intimidating me? And then he me? turned his focus towards Mark Lager. Quick. Then that shot our ratings up three points instantly. In 1988, gunfire erupted in the Kent County Hall of Justice. Judge Carol Irons was gunned down in her chambers. Her estranged husband, Clarence Ratliff, fired the shots. The 1990s started with a big surprise. Continue to be the biggest fan of this state and to help its new governor. West Michigan Republicans helped unseat incumbent Governor Jim Blanchard. Republican John Engler took his place. In 1991, the U.S. went to war and West Michigan soldiers were off to fight. Among those, Melissa Rathman Neely. She was the first woman taken prisoner and WZZM 13 brought you her exclusive story. We were the only television station to have an on-camera interview with, with the Rathbuns about the situation. So we were, as a station, inundated with calls from people all over the world wanting to get access to our interview that we had done. In 1994, professional baseball came to West Michigan. The Whitecaps took Grand Rapids by storm here at Old Kent Park, breaking attendance records throughout the Midwest League. Two years later, the Van Andel Arena opened, and the Grand Rapids Griffins skated into town. They have added uh, social avenues to West Michigan that didn't exist before. Both have also presented opportunities for sports fans to see very good quality, uh, although not major league quality, competition. Uh, 10 minutes from home, 15 minutes from home. So much has happened, and as the 1990s wrap up, you can count on WZZM to continue to bring you the big stories. Well, a lot of great people have worked at WZZM over the years, and when we come back, a trip down memory lane with some familiar faces. If it succeeds, Heritage Commons could be one of the sparks. That Do you remember Ann Doyle? How about Barry Shanley? They will share some of their memories when we come back. This is Diane Levin. As a little girl in Muskegon, I never thought I'd grow up to work for Channel 13, but I did in the late 1970s. Then I came here to Chicago and reported for ABC and NBC News. And since then, I've had my own business, preparing executives, professional athletes, and some pretty famous faces 
to get ready for their own interviews. I'm proud to have been a part of WZZM. To everyone, past and present at the station, congratulations. Hello from Chicago, I'm Scott Cohn, national correspondent for CNBC Business News on cable and a reporter and anchor at WZZM from 1982 to 1989. I have lots of fond memories of my time in West Michigan, a great place to live and a great station. Happy 35th anniversary. A lot of people have brought you the news over the years. Hal Douglas, Ann Doyle, and Barry Shanley, to name a few. Now they've all moved on, but they still have one thing in common, fond memories of their days here at WZZM 13. Tomorrow night at 8.30, TV 13 will present its election coverage completely. Do you remember Jack Hogan? He was one of WZZM 13's first reporters and news director for 15 years. Others included anchor Hal Douglas and the so-called weather girl Shirley Clark. When WZZM signed on the air in 1962, the news department was small and viewership was low. There were two other stations already on the air in the market, and it wasn't easy getting people to watch. Yeah, especially in those days when we were like the distant third in the market. For weeks, farmers have been awaiting a good rain. and Jim Rixey joined the station in 1971, first as an editor and then a reporter. We were really struggling. We were so competitive. Uh, it became every day uh, you'd watch our newscast and be flipping back and forth between the other newscasts and there was this real charge you got when you beat somebody. And, and it wasn't only when you beat the competition. How many times have you come out to your car and found one of these things on the front of it? There was also a rivalry between co-workers. Jim Rixey and I had a great rivalry. Ann Doyle also started at WZZM in the early 1970s. She was a reporter with a desire to win. We didn't want to just do the stories that everybody was covering that day. We wanted to have exclusive stories that people would only see on Channel 13. And I believe that we really made a reputation for ourselves at that time because of that. And probably the rivalry between the two of us helped that. Anne made another reputation for herself. And that's the early edition of our Saturday Eyewitness News. Thanks. She was the first woman ever to anchor television news in West Michigan. There was a lot of fear. There was, uh, I mean, I, when I was first um, hired, um, I was told by radio stations, of course, people would never listen to a woman's voice. The woman's voice is too high, and people would not listen to it doing the news. And convinced WZZM management otherwise. She later left the station to become a sports reporter in Detroit. Tonight, Ken Cap's governing board, in many ways, I, I look upon it as like the golden era. Certainly the, the most fun years for, for me, career-wise. Barry Shanley came to WZZM 13 News in 1976. He started as a reporter, and he wasn't sure he wanted to become an anchor. In fact, I loved it so much when I was offered the anchor job in 1979, I turned it down twice because I really liked, um, you know, the, being on the road and going to small towns and covering serious issues because at that time, it really wasn't done very much. This is Eyewitness News with Lee Vanamy, Barry Shandley. Meteor Barry finally took the job and joined Lee at the anchor desk. Still ahead on Eyewitness News. Delivering news is often serious business, but what Barry remembers the most is the fun he and Lee had. They often played jokes on each other. Thanks for leaving it to me. On a more serious note, the major news of the I think day, it was just about right. Not too often to where the viewer would think we were totally silly, but often enough to where they knew that we were real people who were laughing at a story just like they were, or we would uh, kid around just like they do at their work. We did a lot of great interviews with some tremendous entertainers I can remember. Dick Richards has a lot of fond memories, too. He started at WZZM in 1967, and in the early 70s became co-host of Eyewitness at Noon. It was a half-hour news and entertainment show. But there were some great memories, too. At the time we danced, there was a thing with George Burns on the air, the interviews with Red Skelton. The, just the people who come into your life that just for a whisper, you know, just for a couple of seconds, they're here, it seems, and they're gone. But there'll be great memories forever and ever. Now, live from our West Michigan studios, this is the Midday Edition of Eyewitness News. In 1986, Eyewitness News at Noon changed formats. It became more of your traditional newscast, anchored by Cheryl Grant and meteorologist George Lessons. In the old days, um, the anchor was producing the newscast. So um, we would write everything, actually cut the videotape, 
run down the hallway, make your last minute changes, make sure your live shot was there, talk to your director, quickly whip on some lipstick and then run on the set and try to be relaxed and read and be friendly. Well, a lot of days things were falling apart last minute and the last thing on my mind was coming out and saying, good afternoon everyone, how are you this noon? This is Eyewitness News First. In 1992, Eyewitness News First went on the air. It was West Michigan's only one-hour morning newscast. David Whitford was the meteorologist. He says management at the time told them to have fun in the morning. Sometimes maybe we didn't use our, our best judgment, but we did have fun. Uh, I, I don't think there's anybody who watched regularly who, who would uh, disagree with that. For example, um, Elvis's birthday. We had an Elvis impersonator come in. He came over to help me do the weather. Uh, and all the other wacky stuff, mountain bike rider who was riding, doing tricks over me, bringing the, the bike tire right down on my face. And <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That's quite a tire you have there, boy. Dave says the key to the morning news success was everyone genuinely liked each other, and they had fun, and so did the viewers. The, the Catherine Barrett show and the boys, a lot of the letters that we used to read on the on the air would refer to Catherine and the boys, and that was uh, the rest of us. Kind of like Gilligan's Island, when it's Professor and Mary Ann were just the rest. In the early years, remember, they'd sing the song, and the rest, and it was, that was kind of how we felt, too. <laughs> <laughs> and there were so many others, too. A lot of great memories. And we'll share some other fond memories when we come back. Hi, I'm Jay Shadler, correspondent with ABC News and an occasional hitchhiker. I got my start in television back in 1979 with WZZM-TV, and Lee Vanamy taught me everything I know. Despite that, I'm trying to make a success out of my career. Only kidding, Lee. Congratulations on the anniversary, everyone. shared a lot of wonderful memories in the last 30 minutes. Unfortunately, we only had time to look at a few of the big stories and talk to a handful of former on-air personalities. There were so many others. Now we leave you with a look back at some of the other familiar faces. Thanks so much for joining us, and please keep on watching. <laughs> National and local weather story. Here's weatherman David Cup. Thank you, Hal. Several times during the past few weeks. Hop goes the weasel, and the jack in the box jumps out of his house. Good morning to all my good friends here and to all of my good friends at home. This is the 530 Eyewitness News with Tom Cezanne, Terry Ruggles, David Compton. A suspected bank robber shot and killed a state police trooper. In October of 1981, Ken Colby, TV13 Eyewitness News. Again, be safe to drink. In Grant, I'm Marty Fahey, TV13 Eyewitness News. And I'm Julia Dragas. The president was up bright and early this morning. For the... Wonderful people to work with. Um, just a very, very happy time. This is Esther King, TV13 Eyewitness News. Bill Wagman, TV13 Eyewitness News. Anyway, it's time for sports, and let's turn to Sam Fox. Well, thank you, Lee, and good evening, everyone. It's All-Star Day. In Join us for all the news, sports, and weather coming up next. Mediator in Grand Rapids, Carol Tannis, Eyewitness News 13. We wanted our newscast to look very different, and so that if you miss Channel 13's news that night, you miss something. The experts say sledding done wrong can be dangerous, but done right, it can be a blast. In Grand Rapids, Andy Cordae and Eyewitness News 13. This facility processes 37,000 units of blood every year. It was, it's a great area, West Michigan. And I think TV 13, WZZM, now after 35 years, has proved it's, it's part of their family. And 13 will always be that way, I think. Thank you for joining us on this trip into the 13 Vault with this look back at our 35th anniversary special from 1997. We hope you'll come back again for more travels through the tapes in the vault.